Welcome to a lesson on linear second order homogeneous differential equations. In this video, we'll define a second order ordinary differential equation, define a linear second order differential equation, and then find a general solution to a linear second order homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients when the characteristic equation has two real distinct roots. A second order ordinary differential equation has the form given here where we have the second derivative of y with respect to x is equal to a function in terms of x, the independent variable, y, the dependent variable, and the first derivative of y with respect to x. If the second order differential equation can be written in this form here where we have a function of x times the second derivative plus the function of x times the first derivative, plus the function of x times y equals g of x, then the differential equation is a linear second order differential equation. If it doesn't fit this form, then we say it's nonlinear. And then finally, if g of x, the function on the right, is equal to zero, the linear second order differential equation is homogeneous or homogeneous. And if g of x doesn't equal zero, we say it's non-homogeneous or non-homogeneous. But in our case, the coefficients will be constants, not functions of x. So p of x will be a constant, which we'll call a. q of x is a constant, which we'll call b. And r of x is a constant, which we'll call c. So all the linear second order homogeneous differential equations that we'll be solving will have constant coefficients. Let's begin by looking at an example. Let's say we want to find the general solution to y double prime minus four y equals zero. Notice if we compare it to this form here, a, the coefficient of y squared would be one, b would be zero because there's no y prime in the equation, and c would be negative four, the coefficient of y. So if we took this equation and added four y to both sides, we could write y double prime equals four y, which means we're looking for functions such as the second derivative is equal to four times the original function. Well, this should remind us of the exponential function where the derivative of e to the u is equal to e to the u times u prime. So because we want the second derivative to be four times the original function, notice if we let y equal e to the power of two x, we have to apply the chain rule twice to find the second derivative. So for example, the first derivative would be equal to e to the power of two x times two, again applying the chain rule, giving us two times e to the power of two x. And now to find the second derivative, applying the chain rule again, we'd have two times e to the power of two x times two, or four times e to the power of two x. So notice how our second derivative is four times the original function, Therefore, this would be one solution to our differential equation. But there's also many others. For example, if we let y equal e to the power of negative two x, notice the first derivative would be e to the power of negative two x times negative two, or negative two e to the negative two x. And the second derivative would be negative two e to the negative two x times negative two, or four e to the power of negative two x. And again, notice how y double prime is four times the original function. So to find the general solution to the differential equation, we'll apply a special principle called the principle of superposition, which states that if y sub one of x and y sub two of x are two solutions, to a linear homogeneous second order differential equation, then y of x will be the general solution, where y of x equals c sub one, which is a constant, times y sub one of x plus c sub two, another constant, times y sub two of x. So if we know that our functions are going to be exponentials, we can use the principle of superposition to find the general solution in this form here. So again, this works when we find two solutions to our differential equation. So if we apply this to our previous example, since we found these two solutions, we can now apply the principle of superposition to find our general solution, which should be y of x 
equals c sub one, a constant, times e raised to the power of two x, plus c sub two times e to the power of negative two x. Notice that in this form, r sub one is equal to two, and r sub two is equal to negative two. Now we're going to discuss a method for finding the values of r sub one and r sub two that will make solving these types of differential equations much easier. The method involves something called the characteristic equation. Let's begin by assuming that our differential equation in this form here has a solution of y of x equals e raised to the power of r x. So then if we find the first derivative and second derivative, we should be able to perform substitution into this equation and verify this is equal to zero. So this y here is e to the power of r x. The first derivative, or y prime, would be equal to r times e to the power of r x. And then finally, the second derivative would be equal to r squared e to the power of r x. So because we know that y of x is a solution, we know it must satisfy this equation. So now if we focus on the left side and factor out the exponential part, or e raised to the power of r x, notice how we'd be left with this quadratic in terms of r, or a r squared plus b r plus c. And since this exponential will never equal zero, we can just cancel it out or divide it out. And so this equation is going to be equal to zero when this quadratic is equal to zero. And this quadratic equation here is called the characteristic equation, which we can use to find r sub one or r sub two, which will be the solutions to this quadratic. And once we find r sub one and r sub two, we'll be able to use the principle of superposition discussed earlier to find our general solution, as long as the original differential equation fits this form here. So let's go ahead and apply this to our previous example to see if it works. So again, going back to our original differential equation, we first need to recognize that the given DE is a linear second order homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. So we can solve it using the characteristic equation given here. We already said earlier that a is equal to one, the coefficient of y double prime, b is equal to zero because there is no y prime, and c is equal to negative four, which means our characteristic equation would be one r squared or just r squared. And since b is equal to zero, we just have minus four equals zero. And now we'll solve this for r. Notice how we have a difference of squares, so this factors nicely. We would have the factors of r squared, which are r and r, factors of four, which are two and two. One binomial is a sum, and one is a difference. So let's go ahead and put a minus here and a plus here. Notice it here, r minus two is equal to zero when r equals two. Let's call this r sub one. And r minus two is equal to zero when r equals negative two. Let's go ahead and call this r sub two. Now that we know the values of r, and notice how we have two distinct real roots, the general solution will be in this form here. So just as we found before, by using what we know about derivatives, our general solution, y of x, is equal to c sub one times e to the power of two x plus c sub two times e to the power of negative two x. But now before we go, I do want to discuss one more thing about using the characteristic equation to solve these types of differential equations. The types of solutions to the characteristic equation will affect the general solutions to our differential equation. As discussed in this video, if the characteristic equation has two distinct real roots, this will be the form of the general solution. However, if r sub one equals r sub two, or we have two real and equal roots, the general solution will be in this form, where notice how we have an extra factor of x here in this second term, and we'll discuss where this comes from in the next lesson. And then finally, if r sub one and r sub two are complex roots in this form here, then the general solution will be in this form. And again, we'll discuss this in another lesson. So there are three lessons discussing the three outcomes 
when solving a DE using this characteristic equation, and there will also be several example-only videos to support the lessons. I hope you found this helpful.